Hi, we're Pastor Jerry and Julie Jenkins, Addiction Free in Christ, a ministry of miracles, a ministry without walls and boundaries. In fact, it's a threefold ministry. First of all, helping people receive salvation through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Secondly, helping people receive deliverance from the slavery of addiction. And thirdly, helping people receive healing in their spirit, mind, soul, and body. And this is the word for the week. The word for this week is what you need to know before you vote. So we're going to be looking at that. And it's not, this is not a political message. This is just some facts. What the Bible says you need to know before you vote. So Julie, what does it say that we need to do? Well, the Bible tells us there's a way that seems right to man, but the end thereof is death. Yes. Proverbs fourteen twelve says, there's a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Yeah, well, you know, what else is this, what are we talking about here? If we do what? If we make the wrong choices in this election, we believe it could bring death to our country. So when we're talking about that, we don't mean that everybody's going to die. What we mean is our country could slip farther and farther away from God, farther and farther in the mess that we're in. And we're not talking about Democrat or Republican. We're just talking about we got to get serious about what's going on in our country today. But the Bible says this in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Be not your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Trust in who? The Lord. The Lord. Not in a politician, right. not in a political party, not a Democrat, not a Republican, but trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. The problem is we're all guilty of one thing. We put our trust in man. Mm -hmm. We put our trust in man or man's ideas and this and that. We have to pray this thing through. If there's anything our country's missing, is prayer. Mm -hmm. We need to pray and pray and pray before we make any decisions. In fact, you and I had something come up today that we all of a sudden just stopped and thought, what should we do about that? Mm -hmm. And then we talked it over and we said, we need to pray this thing through. And that's a problem with a lot of people today, uh, and then ourselves included. When something comes up, to, before we make a decision, we need to really take time and pray it through. One of my favorite scriptures is, those who wait upon the Lord right. shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Right. Those who wait. wait on and the Lord. hardest thing for human beings today is to wait. Go on. What does the Bible say here? Well, it says um, to make the right choice, let's look at God's word for instructions. A, a right good choice. place to start would be where God instructed the children of Israel what they should do in the Ten Commandments. He right. told them in Deuteronomy 5, 6-7, through 7, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. And we have to be careful because today people become our gods. Yeah. Sometimes if we're not careful, a, a certain politician, a certain person, a uh, but they they actually become our gods, and we got to watch that because it's so easy to fall in that trap, and uh, so we got to make sure that we don't let any person, place, or thing become our god, other than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and our Father in heaven. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Okay. What else does it say? Well, in Deuteronomy five seventeen, it says, "You shall not murder." That's the next commandment. Okay. There. And so so the thing of it is, daily, I think, anymore, a person should just sit down and go through the Ten Commandments in the right. morning. I mean, it, it, people think, well, why? I know the Ten Commandments, this and that. You know, I think we need to be reminded anymore every day of the Ten Commandments in the world we're living in now. Okay? Yeah. And so it said you shall not murder, right? Right. Okay? So well, that's this, a problem today, isn't it? Right. In the United States, where people have completely... Ignored God's word. Violent crime in the United States is surging, according to Times article published January of 2022. 
Yeah. Also, and here's another news story that you can find on Fox News. October 7th, a man was accused of killing two people and wounding six others in an unprovoked attack on the Las Vegas Strip. He went into a fit of rage after a group of showgirls refused to take a picture with him. And uh, that shows uh, a breaking of that commandment, thou shalt not kill. And overall, crime is up 35% in New York, this in city this year, according to the New York Police Department. Well, the killing goes on and on and on. In fact, our, our major cities today aren't safe. There are no two ways about right. it. And uh, you hear these horrible, horrible stories time after time after time of these people being killed, uh, people breaking in your house and killing you. I, in my lifetime, I have never seen anything like it. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I don't live in New York because on the subways, anywhere you travel, anywhere you go, I mean, people are just killing people right and left for no reason at all, mm -hmm. you know. And so what else does it say? Well, in the year 2020, there were over 920,000 abortions in the United States. Well, that's, that's killing people. That's another example. Yes, it is. And Deuteronomy 5.18 says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Yes. Infidelity in the United States accounted for 20 to 40% of the divorces last year. Hmm. Also, Deuteronomy 5.19 gives us another commandment. You shall not steal. Theft is an, at an epidemic in some American cities. There yes. are 4.6 million cases of theft reported in the United States in 2020. Yeah. Now, these, where these, these gangs go in a place of business and they break the, the whatever, the glass cases mm -hmm. and everything else, and they go in and they completely destroy these people's in these major cities, I don't know how these people are even staying in business. Oh, I don't either. I'm, I mean, that's an, I've never in my life seen anything like that. I mean, these these mobs, you know, not two or three, but 40, 20, 30, 40 people go in, they break all these glass cases and steal everything out of the store. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I've never experienced anything like this. Deuteronomy 5.20 says, You shall not bear false witness to our neighbor. Uh -huh. And before we vote for an individual, let's look at their record of honesty. Boy, that's, God commands that's, us not to bear false witness. That's a goodness. That's a good one right there. Let's look at their record on honesty. Because, uh, you know, today a lot of people in this world is just not really honest. Right. But what does the Bible say about that? Well, Jesus said in Matthew seven twenty, by their fruits you will know them. Yes. What kind of fruit have you seen in the individual you're voting for? Now that's a that's a very, very good point. Mm -hmm. Before we vote, first of all, we should sit down and pray mm -hmm. over every person that we think we're going to vote for. What kind of fruit are we seeing in these people? Right. Or what, what do they really stand for? Are they lining up with God's word or not? Right. That's the main thing we need to talk about right yeah. there. Yeah, what candidate mm -hmm. lines up with God's word in the best way? Yes. Just to ask ourselves. Well, the Bible explains very simply in John thirteen thirty four, where Jesus said, A new commandment I give you that you love one another. Mm -hmm. Is the candidate in the political party you're voting for showing love for one another in our great country? And that's something we really got to get back to because this... Our nation has just spiraled out of control. Mm -hmm. The hatred that people have for each other today by, by the color of their skin or their political, what they think, is just off the scale. Mm -hmm. And we got to go back to that one commandment. Jesus said, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another. That we have to go back to. Mm -hmm. What else are we talking about, Julie? Well... Then to finish up, here's what we need to look for in a candidate. We find that in th Colossians 3, 12 through 17. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy mm -hmm. and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, forgiving one another, if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of My. perfection. 
And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you were called in one body and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom and teaching and monishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Yeah, let's, let's wait a minute. Uh, let's go through some of these again. Kindness. Yes. Today do we see kindness between the Democrats and Republicans, between the different parties, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. Right. If any has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave, you must also do. Right. But above all these things, what are we supposed to put on? Love. Huh? Put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Put on love. If our country's missing anything today, it is love. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the hatred that's going on in America, it does not line up with the Word of God. No. And what we have to do is start praying for one another. Instead of looking at the speck in everybody's eye, we need to look at the log in our own. You right. know what? Right. So I ask you this today. <clears throat> what, whoever you're going to pray for or vote for, I started, I asked, I started to say pray. What we need to do is pray. Pray today for our country. Pray today for our politician. Pray today for, we, we're in a crisis like we've never seen before. So I'm not going to talk about Democrat or Republican. I'm talking about Christian. If you're a Christian, forget being about Democrat or Republican. We need to do what Colossians 3, 12 through 17 says. We need to be long-suffering. We need to be bearing with one another. We need to be forgiving one another. We need to have tender mercies, kindness, and all these things. And that's the first thing we need to do before we can go any farther. Mm -hmm. What else does it say? Well, wisdom is another quality to look for in a candidate. Proverbs 9, 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Yes. Also, Proverbs 3, 3 through 18 says, Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man yes. who gains understanding. Yes. For her proceeds are better than profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand, in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her and happy are all who retain her. So we need to work on wisdom. Right. Not making hasty decisions, praying everything through, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what did Jesus say in John 14? And then to, to sum it all up, Jesus said in John 14, 15 through 18 and 26, if you love me, keep my commandments, yeah. and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will yes. teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things I said to you. Amen. So so what we need to do is pray. Mm -hmm. We need to pray. God gave us the Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. To guide us into what? All, all truth. truth. Yes. And so the Holy Spirit will tell us what we need to do. Yes. But what we need to do is stop before we do anything. We need to sit down and we need to pray it through. And when you go to vote, you need to look at each one of those people and you need to pray about it. And, and before you make that decision and mark a pen, take and pray that thing through. The Holy Spirit will guide us if we will listen. Yes. The problem is a lot of times we want to get in a hurry and let's just go get this over with. Yeah. And we're at a point in our life today, in our country today, that we need to stop and do some serious praying. That is wonderful advice, Pastor Jerry, and, and it encourages us that are watching and us here that 
that we are doing the right thing when we follow godly precepts right. and not to listen to the world, but to do the right thing. God's got a plan for America. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's probably, I don't think, where we are right now. I'm not, not talking about the Democrats, Republicans. I'm talking about God's got a plan for America. But what we need to do is get down and pray the thing through, and he will guide us in what he wants us to do. Amen? Amen. Well, Joe, I think we run out of time as usual. Yeah. Would you, well, we got some people you need to thank. Them. Yes, yes. We'd like to thank Nick Examus of Westtown Ford Lincoln of Jacksonville, Illinois, and Andy and Jeannie Nicholson of Punta Gorda, Florida, our Faith Foundation partners and viewers like you for making these programs possible. And before we quit, we, we got the people in Florida yes. that, that's one of the people helping pay for this. Right now, I want you to real stop a minute. I want you to pray for all the people in Florida. Yes. And because what they're going through is just beyond anything we can imagine. Right. So will yeah. you please, in closing? Sure. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are all sovereign, that you're in control, Lord. We thank you that you have all power and nothing is too hard for you, yes. Lord. God, we thank you that when you were in that boat with the disciples and it was storming, you said, peace, be still, and you yes. calmed the waves. And I pray that you would calm the waves of this storm that came against Florida, yes. that you would bless these people, that you would rebuild them and help yes. them yes. as they try to mm. serve you, Lord. And we pray you bless our brothers and sisters in Christ, especially yes. our sponsors, Lord, um, yes. who've been stood with us through so many things. And now, yes. Lord, we stand with them in prayer, God, united with them, yes. Lord. And we, we we just thank you that you already have the perfect plan for them to do them good and not evil, to give them hope in the future, Lord. We thank you, Lord, and we pray for healing for them, for their families, for those who in Florida who lost a family member, God. We pray for yes. you to comfort them and give them your peace, Lord. Help them and give them the joy of the Lord so that they can rebuild, Lord. We pray for your provision, for your peace, and for your power to be evident in Florida. In Jesus' name, amen. And one thing, one other thing I want to close with real quick. I want to thank all of our Faith Foundation partners throughout the whole United States. We have people from almost every every. Uh, place state. in the United yeah. States, every state, mm -hmm. to help me support this ministry. If it wasn't for you, we couldn't be doing what we're doing. So I want to thank you, each and every one of you, for supporting this ministry. And for, that way it keeps us being able to share the love of Christ and the Word of God with the lost and dying world. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Bye now. God bless you. Bye-bye.